Hello indie game fans! As I mentioned on Twitter, this week suddenly became huge for indie games, with many titles getting announced for release, so my top 10 picks starts with Monster Train. This is a Slay the Spire style deck building roguelite, which as you guys know, I'm a fan of, but the twist here is that there are now multiple lanes. Set on a train to hell, fight off the angelic host to rekindle the fire since hell has frozen over. I love the systems, art and theme, so of course I'm down for this and I'm curious to see what kind of tactical depth the multiple lanes will bring. You're listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe. And Monroe. We worked the case ourselves. Were you sneaking around here earlier? I'd like to report a kidnapping, please. Joe! Another full motion video makes the list with The Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Coming to us from Dear Becky Studios, who made excellent titles such as The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker and The Shapeshifting Detective. Who are you? You know who I am. I'm Eminem. The rapper. Let the darkness consume you. That boy could get hurt. Steady. But what choice do we have, Paul? You always have a choice, Monroe, but that doesn't mean you can change things. Paul? These stories are getting mixed up. Yep. No. Dr. Decker. Their story now follows two local radio presenters in six different episodes of mystery and intrigue, both on and off the air. It's magic. It's done. I'm going to kill you. There's a nightmare stalker, a vengeful ghost, a wish-granting demonic painting and more, where it includes point-and-click adventure game elements as well. She doesn't care about you. She's been killing me. I thought you cared about me. Your lips, so luscious. Oh. They're making me think things. Can you stay? There are multiple endings and many branches in the story, Bye. so it looks like a great one and continues the revival of the FMV genre. Your wife? Disappointing. We will never talk of this again. Ever. Let's just go. Dark Nights. With Pearl and Monroe. Just let them do their thing. Fine. Break the capsule and try to avoid death. Death? He's kidding. Residents are trapped in a burning building on 124th Street. We caught up with an ember responder about to head inside. Oh yeah, uh, I'm gonna be saving uh, John, so I, I really better be going. One satirical take on the modern gig economy is Ember, where you can become a first responder, complete with the missing vowel, to scale buildings, fight fire and save lives, all in a bit to get paid and get a high star rating. This has unlocks and upgrades, character customization and even support for up to 4 players, and for some reason, the first game that came to mind for me as a comparison is Deep Rock Galactic. So for that sort of co-op action, an interesting one to check out. One star? Are you kidding? Join Ember, the emergency services revolution, and become a responder this May. That's the Earth. Burning down and taking humanity with her. So we asked for a spaceship. They gave us tools and said, build your own. We are a colorful group. Cops, Doctors, farmers, engineers, people with the skills and grit to take a basic platform and turn her into something that can fly. I've been looking forward to this for a very, very long time since Space Haven is a colony sim where you and a ragtag group of survivors escape a dying earth and find a way to survive on board, creating a self-sustaining ecosystem while exploring the universe. The pixel art is on point, with some neat looking management and building systems, though I'm curious about the so-called end goal of the title, whether it is just about survival, or if the survivors are looking for some mythical Eden of a planet. And maybe, just maybe, 
will find a new home for humanity. Humans kill 100 million sharks every year. But only five humans are killed by sharks. It's time to even the score. Alright, so this one isn't that indie, but the action shark sim Man Eater looks like a lot of fun. Terrorize and eat humans in this open sea title. Eat. Explore. Evolve. Interestingly, there are upgrades in the form of mutations for your shark, with some really athletic looking maneuvers that you can do as well, and not much more to say other than chomp away. Man eater. Just a quick note, if you are new here and enjoyed the video so far, be sure to subscribe and check out the Discord channel while you are at it. Here's to more indie gaming coverage, so back to the video. Once upon a time, there was a boy, an orphan without a single toy. His name was Pete. His world was grey. Until he found a friend one day. This one is pretty neat, since Never Song is the latest title from developer Thomas Brush, previously behind the spooky action title Pinstripe, and in previews, has been described as a cross between Night in the Woods and Hollow Knight. So my eyes immediately lit up. You fainted in terror as Ren was kidnapped, so the grown-ups went to try This was previously known as Once Upon a Coma, and has the main character supposedly waking up from said coma to find a distorted, dream-like world with its share of monsters and enemies. Search for the truth behind what happened to your girlfriend in this action platformer, but I'm not sure how much of a metric mania it is. But regardless, the art looks fantastic, with some interesting looking puzzles as well. For Pete, into a coma fell. Don't be mad. I'm just a child. As previously covered, the time-bending puzzle game Time Lie looks pretty awesome and has you traversing through an abstract world to search for a way home. There are robotic sentries to avoid and even requires you to control a second playable character in a cat with a video player-like search bar to control the flow of time. However, what is shown in the trailer mainly indicates the time elements being used to rewind if you make a mistake, which isn't all that fun of a mechanic, and I hope the developers manage to incorporate it in interesting ways. However, wonderful art, cute cat, and what seems to be good stealth-based puzzles makes this quite the interesting game to check out. Family Man is perhaps the closest thing that we will get to a Walter White simulator from the hit TV show Breaking Bad. 
do whatever it takes to get money to pay off the mob at the risk of alienating your family. Not a huge fan of the Minecraft style art, but publisher No More Robots has yet to produce a dud, so I'm pretty curious about this. One of the more underrated Metroidvanias is 2016's In Existence, currently sitting at mixed reviews due to complaints about the length and some game mechanics, so enter In Existence Rebirth. This is a remade version of that game, running on a new engine with 3 times the amount of content, tweaks to the graphics, levels, enemies and more with new missions and secrets to uncover. It is pretty neat that this developer has not given up on the game and took in feedback to improve upon the title, so let's hope it is better the second time around. The action roguelite iDracula Genesis has been a hit with you guys based on the comments on my upcoming roguelite video, so I'm happy to say that it is releasing in early access this week. Play as a genetically modified hunter in 420 AC or after Cataclysm, where monsters, demons, aliens and killer robots are everywhere, so take these out upgrade and unlock weapons, and go after Lord Dracula to save the world. As a big fan of the action roguelite, the isometric perspective in this is pretty interesting with some degree of 3D and depth to the action. Of course, the high bit pixel art is also a highlight with some very impressive looking bosses, characters and environments. Nothing particularly gimmicky about this, but it looks like a fantastic roguelite even at the early access launch, with hopefully more to come as the experience gets fleshed out. A no brainer for me, this takes the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.